We take a look at the man in the eye of the storm. That is Cabinet Secretary Henry Rottich. The insider economist picked to safeguard the national coffers under President Uhuru Kenyatta now seems to have been caught with his hand in the cookie jar, as NTV's Julian Zamboko reports. By the time Henry Rotich assumed office as Treasury Cabinet Secretary, he was no stranger to the country's finance ministry. He had been serving in the capacity of head of macroeconomics for a period spanning seven years beginning March 2006. In this position, he was pivotal in the formulation of macroeconomic policy as well as the preparation of the annual budget policy statements, perhaps in a foretaste of what was to come much later on. Now, in this position between 2009 and 2012, he was responding directly to President Uhuru Kenyatta, who at the time was serving as the country's finance minister under the reign of President Mwai Kibaki. And now let's get to the reign of Henry Rotich as Cabinet Secretary for the Treasury. Now, he has been at pains to defend the country's appetite for debt. When he assumed office in April 2013, the country's public debt stood at 1.9 trillion shillings. Fast forward to this particular point where we stand, and as of the latest reporting, the figure stands at 5.4 trillion shillings. Now, this suggests that the public debt has effectively about tripled under Henry Rotich. This appetite for debt has not been without controversy. Henry Rotich and the National Treasury have been at pains to explain the deployment of the proceeds of the 215 billion shillings euro bond issued in June 2014 following questions from the Office of the Auditor General. Now, still under Henry Rotich, the National Treasury has been on the spot over the potential loss of up to 67 billion shillings in irregular pension payments between 2013 and 2017, following questions from the Office of the Auditor General. Now, the Office of the Auditor General has called for tightening of the pension management information system to ensure such issues don't recur in future. Away from that, in 2017, Treasury Cabinet Secretary Henry Rotich and his agriculture counterpart, Willie Bett, were put to task following what was the issuance of Gazette notices creating importation of duty-free maize into the country. Now, taxpayers are said to have lost up to 1.9 billion shillings as rogue millers took advantage of the duty-free importation of maize. In similar fashion, in 2018, Henry Rotich came under pressure following the sanctioning of the duty-free importation of sugar into the country. Now, the country experienced an influx of importation of sugar, which is said to have resulted in the loss of about 2 billion shillings in tax evasion by rogue millers. And as the government moved to digitize the provision of services, Henry Rotich would unfortunately land on the spotlight again. It would emerge that hundreds of millions of shillings paid by ordinary citizens through the e-citizen platform were ending up in private accounts. Now, Goldrock Capital sued the National Treasury, among others, for what it termed as withholding of up to 127 million shillings in transaction fees. And today we have the 21 billion shillings Aror and Kimwarer Dam, which now leaves the 14th floor of the building behind me in a crisis as the two senior most officials, the cabinet and the principal secretaries, face imminent prosecution. Julian Amboko, NTV.